It's time for our last mixer on row two. Are you ready? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our We Whisk You a Merry Christmas quilt. So we have all of the first row completely done and some of us also did our patchwork row and a few of the, um, what are they called, sashings, all right? So those were optional. You can do them at the end of the quilt if you prefer or if you're like me and you like seeing it coming all together, then you may have done them already. So that's row one. And then we also did yesterday, we did the two of the mixer blocks, but we did not sew them together. Don't forget, don't sew them together because there's one that will be in the middle of these two. And that one is different. These are the same design, just different fabrics. And this next one that we're gonna do today is a different design. It's still basically the same as far as all of the steps will be exactly the same, but it is a different design in that these are closed and ready to mix and the one that we're going to do is open and not ready to mix and we can see more of the whisk on that one so it is a different design so when you look for it um, to open the embroidery design make sure to scroll through and find the it's called whisk two mixer two sorry not whisk sorry mixer two all right so let's go ahead and talk about what we need for this one i'm going to personalize mine this will be a very easy day we're just doing this one simple block um there are some applique pieces so it'll take a little bit of time for all the cutting but um, very easy to do so i'm going to personalize mine and i will show you how and give you some ideas um, but that part is always completely um, your preference whether you want to do it or not all right, so grab your packet if you made your packets. Um, this is the one, um, it's called Mixer 2. And I decided I wanted to personalize this one because the other two were on a very busy fabric. All right, this is pretty busy fabric and this next one is not as busy. And that's why I thought it would be good for personalization. So I'll show you as we get there. All right, so we're going to start with our main fabric, and it actually is different than the other two. Um, the other two, we used that light gray um, with all the lines all over it, and then I used a darker gray for my quilting so that it would stand out a little bit more. I might do that again on this next one. I'm not totally sure. I might do something. I might even do a different color. That would, might be kind of fun. Haven't decided on that yet. All right, so on this one, it is the white lattice. It's a tone-on-tone um, -tone fabric, white lattice fabric, all right? You can hopefully see that right there. All right, so the white lattice fabric. And again, I don't know if that's what it's actually called. It might be called orange peel. The quilting design that matches it is called um, orange peel, but I think it might be called lattice, but I'm, I'm totally guessing on that. All right, there you can see it better. All right, so that's the fabric for today. And we're gonna start with our main fabric at eight and a half by eight and a half, all right? And make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. As I mentioned before, if on these white fabrics, it's easy if you cut your stabilizer in a little bit, like I cut mine eight by eight for my stabilizer, and that makes it so that I can easily see which side is the front and which side is the back. So that's optional, but a little tip there. So eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric. And then for our mixer, it is this black with big white dots. Isn't that gonna be fun? I think that will be really pretty. So black with white dots, this is for the mixer and it's gonna be five and a half by five and a half. I do back my um, applique pieces with fusible stabilizer. It makes it easier to cut and make sure you're not gonna get puckering, but that part's optional. Always at least do your main fabric. All right, so five and a half by five and a half for the mixer fabric and then for the bowl this is the one I was telling you about it's not a busy fabric so it would be fun to personalize so you can see it's a very light gray with very little white dots on it um, it's not busy at all and this we're going to start with that three by two sorry three by two and a half sorry about that three by two and a half for the bowl and I did back mine with feasible stabilizer that is optional um, but keep in mind too that if we're going to add to it then you'll have more possibility of puckering because you'll have more stitches than what they're ex expecting on this so keep that in mind up to you if you decide to um, stabilize it or not another thing is it's a very light gray and it's going to be on this dark black fabric so stabilizing it is always a good idea because then you're not going to have that bleed coming through the other darker color all right so on the bowl 
three by two and a half, okay? And then we have the mixer stripe. So just like before on the other two um, mixers, I cut both by mistake. I didn't realize that the fabric one, this piece of fabric is optional and I didn't catch that when I was prepping my video so or when I was prepping my fabric. So I cut it anyway. But if you got the embellishment kit, then you received this um, gray uh, stripe sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> glitter vinyl all right so that one is what I'm going to be using I'll save this for another project um, but either one whether you're using this or a fabric it doesn't matter um, you want four by one and a half one piece that is four by one and a half and like I like I showed yesterday on the video you want to make sure to always take off that um, that plastic topping from whenever you have the Kimberbell glitter vinyl it comes with this plastic topping on it and you want to make sure to take that off and like I showed in yesterday's video we will iron it to adhere it um, and there isn't a satin stitch on this so make sure that you're using um, whatever thread color that you want to hold it down um, without thinking that there will be a satin stitch to cover it up so I used a light gray yesterday I'm going to do that again today I think it was cool gray three if I recall but make sure to take off that topping so four by one and a half for the stripe on the mixer and that's whether you're using the glitter vinyl or the fabric piece the fabric piece that they recommend if you didn't get the embellishment kit is the light gray with gray stripes on it four by one and a half and you don't need both like I have <laughs> that was my mistake all right and then for our batting today we want our batting to be seven by seven for our batting seven by seven that means our final cut size is going to be six and a half by six and a half so batting that is seven by seven and this information is not in the book if you're going by the book remember this was made before they did the before Kimberville came out with quilting designs so I think that they on their picture they probably did a long arm quilting we are quilting in the hoop that's why I've got the batting sizes available for you so seven by seven is our batting for today now on the quilting, you want a quilting design that is six by six. Any quilting design that you want that is six by six. I'm gonna use Hobby One, the same one as we did before. I'm almost certain I'm gonna do that, almost positive. I think that's really cute because it's got that mixer on there. See the mixer in the quilting? I thought that was really fun. That's what made me choose this one. So I almost definitely will use the same um, quilting design, which is Hobby One and um, in a six by six, whatever quilting design you, ch you choose in a six by six. And if you are using a five by seven hoop, um, the mixer still will fit in a five by seven hoop. It is a five by seven design. It's just the quilting that won't fit in a five by seven hoop. So you would do a four by six and a two by six quilting design, double hoop to be able to get the full six by six quilting. All right, so like I said, I'm gonna personalize mine I've already thought about what I want to do and I've come up with other ideas as well. Um, so you can do whatever you want to do or you can leave it as is. It's super cute as is too. But when you have a fabric that isn't super busy, I think it's really fun. That's your opportunity to be able to stretch and, and try something new. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to bring you over to the computer and I, I'm going to try and hook up my new microphone and, and get that working before I do this step. Fingers crossed it works. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to bring you over to the computer and show you in a brilliance essential some ideas and how to do them if you choose. Hey everyone, I'm at my computer and I have set up my new microphone and I tested it and it sounded great on my end. So you'll have to tell me how it sounds on your end. I'm pretty excited about it. And I want to thank you again for your donations because of your donations, I was able to buy this very expensive microphone and you should you should see it's like heavy it's very solid and and i'm pretty excited about it so thank you again so i am going to open up and brilliance essentials that is the software that i use and that i show how to use um, and I'm going to give you a few options or I'm going to show you some ideas. And as always, um, you have the option of just doing the design as is, or you can stretch a little bit and try something new. All right. So I've got in brilliance essentials open. It says I'm on my eight by eight hoop. I think actually that's the hoop size I want. We're just doing one block. Um, I, 
I don't think it would fit in my six by six. So I'm gonna go with my eight by eight. If you're not on the hoop size you want, come up here to this preferences folder and then click on the hoop size you want, say okay, and then click on this compass button and click on H so that it zooms into the hoop. All right, and then you can open up your file either by going to this merge stitch file button and then navigate to where you have your file. I have my folder open already, so I'm just gonna click on that folder now remember I mentioned that there's two whisk designs. We're using the, not whisk, I keep calling it whisk, sorry, two mixer designs. And we're using this one that has the open um, mixer that we already used this one. So we're gonna use this mixer too. So make sure you're grabbing the right one. And if you're doing it this way, you just grab it and drag it over. Um, or you can, like I said, go to um, the merge stitch file button. Either one of those will work fine. Normally we bring in the quilting design first. Um, I'm not gonna do that today and I'll show you why. Since we're gonna personalize it, it's easier if we don't have quilting in the way. I want to be able to see what I'm working on and then I'll add it afterward. Don't let me forget to add it afterward. <laughs> All right, so here's our mixer design. And this is great as is. You can leave it just like this and call it a, a day. You don't need to add in your quilting design, but you can do that separately. All right, so I'm going to show you something fun. So the idea that I had, there's a couple of them. So the one that I think I'm gonna go with, I'd like to put a monogram in here. Now I lost all of my monogram designs when my hard drive failed, but I was able to remember a couple of the ones that I used to have. And I so I went and I re-downloaded it. So I'm just gonna show you that, but look through your monogram designs and to decide what you like. Keep in mind, this is a small area. It's not a really big area for a monogram. So something one and a half inches or under would work. Anything larger than that really won't work. You won't be able to shrink it down enough without distorting it. So one and a half inch or smaller. And a lot of monograms are like three inches, four inches, but you can find several that are one inch or one and a half inches. And either of those would work fine. So I'm going to show you the one that I found and I went ahead and I downloaded it. Where did I put it now that I think about it? It's right there. Okay, so I'm gonna just so I'm gonna just show it to you on the computer so that you can see it um, all at once and where to find it. This is the one that I'm gonna use. It's called Natural Circle Monogram Beaded, and it is by Applique Market. Applique Market. So I bought this several years ago. I like it. It's a cute, simple design. They have a lot of them. Um, one of my favorites is this um, one with like beading around it. Rather, this is beaded, but there's beading around it. It's And a, there's um, a chevron one. There's several ones from this applique market. If you type in monogram, you'll see all kinds of stuff. Um, but keep in mind that you want to have something smaller. A lot of those pretty ones that I've mentioned were too big for this. So when you scroll down, so here is the design. And when you scroll down, there is, um, more information and you can see that the smallest size it comes in is one and a half so when you're looking through your monogram designs or looking on a website for monogram designs remember you want it to be one and a half or smaller for it to fit in this design and even then you'll have to shrink it just a little bit and so anything bigger when you shrink it too much it's going to distort the design all right, so this is the one I'm using. Um, like I said, I just re-downloaded it. So find whatever design that you like um, or choose this one from Applique Market. Um, Stitchtopia has designs. Um, I'm sure Designs by Juju has designs. Um, who else? There's a lot of them, but a lot of them have also gone out of business. And so um, anyway, whatever you like, I think that this will be a, a cute one for this and it's just simple. So that's the one I downloaded. So when I downloaded it, you always have to make sure to um, unzip the file. And I already I already did this, so I'm not sure if I can show you again. I was really surprised, I have to tell you. So in, in the past, so when I, let, let me show you right here. So we're gonna start by adding a monogram by coming to this create letter. So if you click on that, it brings up that ABC here and it's in the block font. And then what I like to do is I go here and I look through my fonts. Well, when I bought Embrilliance Essentials, I didn't load any of my monogram fonts because I figured, oh, that's not gonna work. A monogram, you generally bring in the middle letter first, and which is bigger, and then the two side letters, which are a little bit smaller. And so it, 
you have to do more work than a regular font. So I didn't think it would work. So I didn't load any of my monogram fonts. And just now when I downloaded this one, I tested it and I was amazed. I was absolutely surprised how easy it is with um, BX fonts. I did not load any of mine, unfortunately, then I would, I would still have them. Um, because like I said, a bunch of them have gone out of business and I can't re-download them after my hard drive failed. So the BX fonts, even with a monogram, work extremely well with Embrilliance Essentials. It, it, I'll show you. It was pretty amazing. All right, so go through your fonts. See if you have any monograms. They, the BX specifically, you want the BX font. Um, but go through them. See what you like. I didn't have any in there, so I had to download mine separately. So what I did, whenever you're downloading any font, you unzip the file after you purchase it from wherever you're getting it. You um, download the design, the designs, or um, download the, your purchase, and then unzip the folder. And then within the folder, see there's this BX. A bunch of them come with BX, so you don't have to really worry about that. I'm going to move this over here. I already did it, so I don't know if it'll let me do it again. But all you do is open up that BX, highlight all of the BX ones specifically. See, it says BX here, and then you just drag it over. Yeah, it did it. Let me do it again. That's pretty good. So, and then it says, look, it, it's been installed. You have all of these. They're installed. That's how easy it is. You literally just unzip the folder, find the BX fonts, drag it over. Easy peasy. All right. So then you say, okay. So now mine is loaded to my Embrilliance Essentials. So I'm going to click on this ABC font again, and then I'm going to go over here and then you have to find it. And I don't, I should have remembered how they had it. Oh, I think, I, nope, that's not it. Um, so applique market, I have ballerina. So I'm just going to find, there it is. That was easy. <laughs> so the one that I purchased, it's under applique market, natural circle, beaded one and a half inches. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, oh, I want that one. All right. And so immediately, so watch this. I thought I'm going to have to bring in each letter, size it down, do all of that. You don't have to do any of that. So when you do a monogram, most people, not everybody, but most people do first name, middle name, um, sorry, first name, last name, middle name. So for me, it would be CSC. That is my monogram. So that the bigger letter, the one in the middle is your last name. That's how most people do it, but not everybody. And it's totally up to you how you do yours, but that's how I'm going to do mine. So CSC, and then look at this. Boom. <laughs> You don't have to load each one and resize it and get it next to the S. You don't have to do any of that. And Brilliance Essentials with BX Fonts just did it. Like that was just amazing to me. So once you do that, then you're just going to bring it down. See, it's too big for me for, for this um, bowl here. So I'm just going to click on the design, get it somewhat... Um, to where I want it. And I think it was, you hit the shift button and then any of these and yeah, it sizes from the center. So I like that just so that, cause if you're doing it, um, resizing it, all you have to do is just click on one of these and bring it in, but then you're moving it around still. So if you get it pretty close to where you want it and then hit that shift button, it will make it so that it is, um, stay, it resizes from the center. So it stays where it is, if that makes sense. All right, so resize it to whatever looks good to you. One thing I would recommend, if you click outside of the design and then click on your mouse to zoom in, that's one way to be able to zoom in so that you can see it. Another way is to click on this compass button and this crosshair that's here, bring it to where you want it, and then zoom in from there. Whatever works for you, all right? So I'm just gonna play around with it until I get it where I think it looks pretty centered. I did do, I have to tell you, when I did a test, I did that align and distribute option. And to do that, I'll show you real quick. Um, I didn't like the outcome of it personally, but I'm going to show you just so you have some information. So if you're going to do that, you would want to do it from the placement or tack down of the bowl, because if you're doing the satin stitching, it's doing a bigger amount, see, because of that handle. 
So I did it from here. And all I did is I went to um, that. So it's one, three. And then I went to, I hit my control button and hit my letters so that I have just that, just the bowl and the letters. And then I went to utility, align and distribute. And I'll show you, and, I'll, and then I'll just redo it. I wasn't super happy with it on this, um, but if I hit center, center, and then say apply, and see it moves it to where it thinks it's it's centered, which I'm sure it really is, but see how close it is over here and it's not as much over here. I liked it better um, when I moved it personally to what I thought looked right. So I'm gonna say undo with this little black arrow button. So you have that option of doing that if you choose, but there's the undo right there. Yeah. So I am going to, let's see here. Did it move it back? Yeah, yeah. All right, so see there a little bit of space here, a little bit of space here, a little bit there. I like that. To me, that looks really good. So whatever visually looks good to you, get your design centered in the way that it looks good to you with the letters that you have. So your letters um, will look different. But I like the look of that. That's That was super easy. All right, so I'm going to show you some other ideas. But for now, I want to finish this one off um, because I'm quite sure that that's what I want to go with. I'm going to go back to that um, compass and H button just to see it all. And then I want to make sure to bring in my quilting design. You can always do that on your embroidery machine. You can bring in the quilting design, run through the quilting design, and then bring in the mixer. But we're here, why not just do it all together, right? So I'm gonna go to um, merge stitch file. I think I actually have that folder open. Oh, not really, but I'm liking this drag and drop feature. So I'm gonna do it this way. So um, if I go back to my embroidery files, oh, it wasn't embroidery, it was the quilting. Quilt files and it was hobby one. Yep, hobby one and we want a six by six block by block. So right there, I'm just going to drag that over. Easy peasy. So now keep in mind, this is super important that quilting is going to go on top of everything else. That's obviously not what we want. And like I said, normally, we would bring in the quilting design first, but it just makes it hard to do that monogram when there's stuff in the way. So that's why I did it later. So I'm just going to click on the design, right click, and I'm going to say move first, and then it'll be the first thing. And now it'll be behind. I'm going to click outside. So we have our quilting design, we have the um, mixer design, and then we have the uh, monogram. All right, so that that's great. I love that. And look at, I can see my mixer. It's in the perfect location. That is so cute. This is going to be a really fun block. I think it'll be great. So I'm going to say file, save stitch file as, and then I'm going to show you some other options. So let's see, we whisk and embroidery files, Paz quilt. And I'm on Jeff by mistake here. Let's see. Not by mistake, I was making a label for somebody. All right, so I'm going to name this um, Mixer 2. I can type Mixer 2 personalized. Um, and I think I'll make this, I'll say 8 by 8 just so I remember what hoop size I need. Save. All right, so that one is done. So I want to show you, if you don't want to do a monogram or even if you just want to think of some other ideas, I'm going to show you something else. So I'm going to... I'm going to start by going to File, New Page. I'm going to go back to that first one. I'm going to click on this mixer. I'm going to say Control-C to copy the mixer, just the mixer. Go to that new tab, say Control-V, and I have just my mixer to work with. All right, so another idea that I had that I think would be super cute, and I don't own this design, so I can't actually show it to you, but I'll show you... Um, like if I didn't do that monogram, I'm I'm pretty certain that this is what I would do personally, but there's a lot of ideas. So let me just show you some other ideas. So that was Applique Market. Don't forget, you can also check Stitchtopia and other, other brands for other monograms. But another thing that I was thinking of, remember So Cha Cha, we used them um, for our Falling for Autumn quilt. They have a lot of mini designs and a lot of cute ideas. So when you go to So Cha Cha on Etsy, make sure to click on 
the minis. Start by mini designs. Look, they have 404 of them. I'm already on it, so it's not letting me click on it. But um, make sure to start with the minis because otherwise you'll be looking through things that won't work for um, that little bowl. And then just look through these, right? So I already looked through them all. I found some cute ones and I saved a couple of cute ones. This was my favorite. I think this is so darn cute. Wouldn't this little gingerbread boy be so cute? I don't know if he comes angled like that. My guess is he might. And if he does, then you would just rotate him on using Embrilliance Essentials super easy or have them angled like that, that's fine too. But this one, the gingerbread comes in a four pack of four really cute designs. Even that gingerbread cookie is super cute, but I think the gingerbread would be so darn cute. Um, some other ideas, I think I favorited a few ideas so that you could see. So in that, in So Cha Cha, so this is the mini milk and cookies um, pack. And then I bought this pack. I uh, bought it a while ago and that whisk would be cute. The bowls would be cute. Personally, I think these cookies are just so darn cute, but look at this mini kitchen with flowers. How cute are these? This one, especially, I think that'd be so cute on that bowl. So these are just some ideas. Any mini design that you think is cute would be really fun or something that is specific to you that you like, right? So it, these are just ideas. So if you were going to do that, I'm going to go, so go, you would download your purchase, extract it, drag it over to um, Embrilliance. But I have this one. And since I have it, I'm going to go ahead and just show you that so that you can see how to do it. I'm sure you could figure it out, but just in case. So we've got our mixer design and I'm going to go ahead and open up. Yeah, here it is. All right. So my So Cha Cha minis and this, I have several um, So Cha Cha designs, but from that, why I went ahead and I extracted the wire whisk because I thought that was pretty cute and it's really just to show you so if I take the wire whisk and just drag it over it's going to center it right to the center of the design and you would move it from there now keep in mind we've got a small little bowl here so I would need to um, center it all right so I'm going to just hit that shift button even though I'll have to move it a little bit anyway but you would just move whatever your design is. If you get that cute little gingerbread boy, move him over to, um, you know, how he looks cute on the bowl. I should have just purchased him because he was so darn cute. I really like that little that little gingerbread boy. I was like, oh, do I want to do that or do the, the monogram? And I decided on the monogram at this point, but Oh, that gingerbread is really cute. So anyway, you would just move it over and size it up to how you want it. Make sure it's the last thing um, so that it's not, it's going on top of that fabric. And then of course, don't forget to bring in your quilting design in an easy way for me, since I've already done it, I'm just going to go to that first one, say control C, bring it over here, control V to copy it, V like Victor to copy. And I'm going to right click on the design and say move first so that it is your quilting and then your mixer and then whatever your personalization is. Make sure it's a little mini so that it fits in there well. And that's really cute too. So whatever you want to have in the center, whether it's a monogram or a mini little item or some sort of personalization, you could put just your first letter of your first name or your first letter of your last name in there. That would be really cute too. Whatever it is, this is a fun way to stretch and try out um, something different. So I'm, I'm leaning toward going and buying that gingerbread boy now so that I can see how cute that is too, because I know it will be cute, but I initially wanted a, a monogram somewhere and this is a really good spot for it. To any time that you find a fabric that isn't too busy, it's fun to be able to personalize it. So let's see. Yeah, cute, cute. All right, so you saw how to do it. Super easy, super fun. And hopefully you're hearing it great on my new microphone. I love this thing. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see how big it is. Look at this. <laughs> huge so anyway it works really it's super solid so I am going to go ahead and utility send to my machine you would just save it to a USB stick if you don't have that feature and I have a um, 
a video on how to do that if you're having trouble. But we are ready to get stitching and I hope, I can't wait to see if you personalize your mixer. So you guys, <laughs> I found another gingerbread on So Cha Cha and I had to break down and get it. Look at how cute. So if you go to So Cha Cha on Etsy and then just type in gingerbread, you get a few other options. And I didn't see this one initially, which is kind of funny because I went through each of them, um, all 404. I actually went through them all. So somehow I missed that gingerbread. But this one is super cute too. That is the original one that I mentioned, super duper cute, but I broke down and I had to buy this. So I'm going to show you very quickly. If you decide that you want to do that, I'm going to open up my Embrilliance essentials and that whisk I'm going to go ahead and delete that and the whisk would be really cute this is a whisk quilt right so that's a an option as well so I am going to go ahead and just bring in that little gingerbread there's a boy and a girl I'm going to do the girl and I'm just going to bring her in and see how cute that is too so cute how cute is she all right so she does need to be shrunk down a little bit this is the one inch design. I think I did the one inch design. Um, let me move my head out of the way and we can check it. Yep. So you can, whenever you've got it selected, you can see right down here the ex exact size of it. And that is just, she is really, really cute. Very cute. There's a jump stitch between the eyes that we'll, we'll have to cut and another one to the mouth. Um, and they'll be tight because it's a small design, but that is really cute. I'm thinking like, our red bow and green um, dots on her tummy to match our quilt. Super cute. So now I have to decide if I want to do the gingerbread or the monogram. I love both of them. I don't know what to do here. So you're going to have to wait and see. <laughs>
my phone just decided to turn on all by itself, so I, I'm ready. All right, so um, I, how are you doing with your goal? I want to hear about your goal. Um, I have changed my goal, like I mentioned in yesterday's video. I am going to um, simplify. So um, I'm going to change it to exercise. I need to be able to get some exercise after all of that um, surgery and recovery. And I still have very limited abilities in that arena. So um, I'm going to be taking it easy. So anyone that is um, in a similar situation where you're maybe just starting out with exercise or you're, you've got some limited abilities because of whatever and um, for me it's for surgery so I'm just gonna try and inspire you with with various workouts so um, it's rainy here it actually is really really cold and rainy and so no outdoor walks um, today or yesterday so instead I got on the treadmill but the funny thing is is I worked until um, almost 10 o'clock last night and so on on our tutorial on editing our, our first tutorial which ended up being bigger than I had planned and so I didn't get a workout until pretty late but I still made it work so that that's the the cool thing is I still made it work and when I, I have a Nordic track treadmill which I just love and there's these iFit trainers that take you all over the world so I think I was in Colorado yesterday on on an iFit workout and um, beautiful terrain really enjoy that but he started running and it's it's a walking light jogging series that I'm doing and so as soon as it did that I had to hit the button to like turn it down to like three out three three miles an hour to 3.2 I think I did maybe even 3.3 but he was jogging at like 4.9 and I'm like nope no nope, nope can't do that yet <laughs> so I turned it down so you can always adjust it to what works for you make sure that you're doing a workout that is safe for you and and your ability at this point whatever that is um so I I made that work and I, I was still able to get a good workout short I like I walked I, less than a mile and a half but it felt really good just to be able to do that again after sitting around for what two two and a half weeks of not being able to do anything so I'm, I'm very thankful for it I can't wait until it gets sunny out and I can get outside and do some hikes I would really enjoy that I'm looking forward to it I can't ride my bike for another month or another three and a half weeks or so so I'm going to be doing lots of walks and hiking eventually hopefully but right now just simple simple walks and so I enjoyed that I will share some photos um, of my hike did I save them hmm, I might have already deleted them but I will check and see um, but I will add photos if I have it of the different terrain that I was walking at in yesterday on my iFit workout and my shirt today, this is a fun one. So my friend Shannon in our Christian Creates group, um, she knows I love cycling. And so she sent this, it's like a whole um, life is beautiful design. And that's what I have on the back of my shirt. I will add a photo, um, but I put that on the back of this shirt and it's it's a OESD design. And it's funny because she sent me the link and she's like, oh, you need to get this. And I looked through my my orders from OESD and I had it. So I just re-downloaded it because, you know, I lost my hard drive and all of my files are gone. So I re-downloaded it and I put it on my shirt and I'm like, got it. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. And the design, it's got a lot of white like overlay on it. And so I figured on a, a dark sweater and I've had this sweater for years sitting in a drawer just waiting to embroider on it. So I figured out oh, perfect. Perfect. So I've got that on the back. I will add a photo. And then this cute little, little um, bicycle, I found it on Etsy the other day. And I was like, oh, that'll be perfect for the front front of this zip up sweater. So um, the end, it was such an easy, quick stitch out. So I will add a link for that as well. I'll also add a link for the sweater. I'm pretty sure I still have where I got it. I know it was from Amazon um, and I have an Amazon storefront now. So I will add a link here. You just click on that and there's a tab for all of the recommended sweaters that I have enjoyed embroidering on. So some of them you can get one and it's not so great for embroidery. And so all the ones that are in that tab will show you that I have embroidered on it it works really good and so I am recommending it um, and I've tried to add various information on some of them too like how they fit and stuff so anyway check out my Amazon storefront whenever you make a purchase on the Amazon storefront or within Brilliance Essentials it helps my 
my tutorials, you know, it helps to, I get a little kickback from them. So it does help, um, out with the channel. So it, check it out the Amazon storefront. I created it. It's got all kinds of information of things that I recommend and I will add this sweater in there too.